morning, everyone, and welcome to the In Touch podcast, a little space that our community holds for conversations by everyday humans or everyday humans. We hope you're having an easy Sunday morning as we are about to once again bring to the table another important factor in maintaining our mental health and emotional well-being. Um, Joining you today are four mental health advocates, allies, friends, volunteers from InTouch Community Services, also known as InTouch Philippines. Now, to anyone wondering who this girl is, I am Abby, and I'm just some person who does some stuff at InTouch. Um, But kidding aside, I've long been a supporter of mental health, uh, but I guess I've only really been an active advocate since 2018. So to everyone who's just having their breakfast, allow us to enjoy the morning with you as episode 9 airs today and we're talking about work-life balance. So ladies, with me. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Thank you so much for starting us off on the amazing um, and energetic start, Abby. My name is Julia. Um, I'm just a recent volunteer for InTouch um, and um, it was really great. Um, I too claim to be uh, in an, a mental health advocate and um, I'm a single mother. Um, I'm 26 years old. I'm currently trying to get my master's in counseling and yeah, juggling life as a single mom and working and studying is not easy, but we're here and we're going to talk about what we can do to help each other. So passing it off to you, Grace. All right. Thank you, Julia. Okay, so follow me, Abby and Julia. Again, a happy Sunday to everyone. And uh, I'm actually, I, I can fully relate with Julia because I, I myself is also a student, uh, uh, an employee, a full-time employee, and uh and a, a mental health advocate, definitely. So significantly, I just started with uh, with my master's last 2019. And I've been a part of uh, In Touch since April this year. So I'd like to uh, also claim that I'm a silent uh, a mental health advocate um, since I was college, since I'm a graduate of BS Psychology. And I've been... Um, of course, well-being and is, some, is something that is very important to me. So there, and uh, I'll give you the, uh, give the floor now to Marga. Thank you so much, Grace. And hello again to all our viewers. Good morning. I hope you're all having a great start to your Sunday. Uh, my name is Marga, and like all the ladies here with me this morning, I'm also part of InTouch, the InTouch community. Um, I joined them uh, last year as an intern. Um, so I've been volunteering and also doing a lot of other work for the youth advocacies as well. So yes, um, I am partly a mental health advocate. I try to do my best um, and also in applying that in the practice to myself. So it's great that we're all here this morning to talk about a really fantastic topic, which anybody can apply. So this is all about um, wellness and um, how to balance work life. Um, So just to share a little bit more about myself, I'm currently recently become a full-time grad student. So very similar, I guess all of us here on this um, podcast this morning, we're all kind of on different tracks, uh, different tracks of life, but I'm also a grad student. I'm uh, finishing the last, the very last requirement to graduate and finally get a degree. And it was a long, arduous process to get here. I know Julia, uh, Grace, you you definitely also resonate. You know what the struggles are of trying to balance being a student with all the other things going on in your life. So it's great um, to hear that we're all on our journeys and we're all going to get there sometime. <laughs> hopefully soon. So yeah, so thanks. Thanks again. Um, so that's, that's me. Um, I'm an only child and as an only child by virtue of not having anyone else to play with uh, as my age, um, I had to, I had a lot of time to kind of throw myself into extracurricular activities. And so it was my whole life growing up. I had, 
after school, I'd like run to dance class or I'd run to another extracurricular activity, leadership, whatever, whatever. And um, I brought that kind of um, formula or like mode of like mentality into college and I had to like overfill my plate. At one time, I kid you not, I had 30 units plus, plus, plus other extracurricular activities. I died, guys, by the middle of the second. I was like literally 7.30 to 9, 9 to 10.30, 10.30. Wow. <laughs> and then I'd go oh to a job. Um, at that time, it was a student, studio, student radio job. I know, dude, like if anyone's watching that and is thinking of taking 30 units, <laughs> do it. Don't. You're making a huge <laughs> mistake. Just, just stick to the 18 and you're fine. Um, and I, you know, I brought that kind of um like hustle kind of mindset and um mm -hmm. and when I finally got out of college and I had a job um be that I, I was a radio DJ and as a radio DJ you only have four hours of work in a day and I had the morning shift right from two to six in the morning oh. so literally I had nothing else to do through that and so it was like a, like a sugar high and a crash and I had no idea what to do um and then recently I, I had my daughter so a lot of things a lot of things kind of got um not turned upside down but mm. different and um it yeah so that's kind of why I signed up because I have such a personal vendetta <laughs> <laughs> it, or it has a personal vendetta against me and or it's something I'm really trying to work on so oh thanks thanks Julia I actually resonate with um, most of what you what you shared um, same uh, this topic uh, all about work-life balance seemed the most the most like most down-to-earth topic you don't need to be a professional you don't need to be a specialist to talk about this topic because this is something this is something the everyday person ha deals with or tries to to practice right every day and so it's very relatable. It's something we all go through and you don't need to be to have a PhD in it to talk about it, right? So that's one of the reasons why. And another similar, um, you have a personal vendetta. I also kind of had that, ex I have that kind of sentiment towards a work-life balance because when I graduated, um, entered the workforce, um, my first experience was very, very stressful and it kind of, got me to the point where I really noticed things weren't feeling right for me, uh, physically, emotionally, psychologically. And um, it made me confront uh, the problem, which was the work was just too stressful. And I, I think I felt a lot of burnout symptoms at that time. And that made me decide to, to make changes in my life. And because of um, mental health, it kind of helped push me in this direction to take my master's and to become a mental health advocate um, just to kind of help myself and also as a way to help others out because uh, being in the workforce you are you see that this does happen to a lot of people it's it's more it's more common now uh, you see your office mates your colleagues struggling with it especially now in the pandemic it's worse so yeah so that's why i really um, gravitated towards this topic because it's very relatable. It is, it is. Yeah. Thank you, Julia and Marga. In my case, I'm particularly drawn to the topic because I recently had a struggle with it, especially during the um, start of work from home, uh, peak of the peak of a pandemic and lockdown. And um, yeah, I, in fact, I almost given up on my master's. I, I had a talk with my mentor already. If I can take a pause just to, you know, um, balance everything out. But uh, yeah, it's it's very close to my heart because it's something that I I learned the hard way, and I really find how significant it is. So you can actually give out the best in all areas of your life. So um, that's something that I, I, I perhaps I can share with uh, this morning, with, with our les listeners this morning. And uh, yeah, that, that's it for me. Yeah, so I commend all of you ladies. Like we've <laughs> all gone through struggles and we're here today as survivors or trying to survive 
uh, in the midst of everything that's going on in our own lives. So kudos to everybody who's really trying to make an effort in their day-to-day. So good job, guys. Yeah, and, and we want to extend that congratulations as well to anyone listening and struggling with the same thing, trying to figure out when to put in friends, when to put in time for their family, um, when to, you know, take a pause from whatever pressure, burnout, as Marga said, and, mm-hmm. and the struggle of, you know, so good that you went to a mentor race, you know, and um, yeah, so uh, we want to also congratulate all the survivors out there who are listening. Thank you. Especially with the ongoing pandemic, it's mm. sometimes so hard to just show up, keep showing up every day, but you know mm-hmm. that you have to. And blurring out the environment, your boundaries, the environment before, you know, if, if you want to go to school, and have put on a different hat, you know, that's easier to do. Mm-hmm. Or you want to go to work and put on that hat, it's easy. But now, when you get up from your bed in the morning, if you're like me who works in in your bedroom, you know that it's always just behind you. So it's it's a struggle to yeah. to continue throughout the rest of the day. So that's that's additional additional effort um well a a few months ago i was very very close to feeling burnt out Mm. but i got a new role and this one's still at the role is still at its infancy stage i guess so it's not as busy as the previous one but which which was good actually because well initially we had the reason why I sort of one of the reasons why I wanted change because I felt like I couldn't I couldn't fulfill the duties and responsibilities of my previous mm-hmm. role any longer and I it's it's too much for me I think mm-hmm. um, although I loved it very very much um, it's hard to come to terms with having to let go of something that means so much to you simply because you you feel drained already. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I'm in this new role, I feel guilty that I question myself sometimes if I'm being productive enough. Mm-hmm. So I feel now that there's so much time I have for life. Mm-hmm. What's happened to the work aspect? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's also normal. Um, y- your body has gotten so used to being like like this every day, so th- this transition it must it's also an adjustment. Um, that that brings about the question like what what does work life balance mean mean or mean to each of us? Because um, it could probably look like different things to different people. Or mm-hmm. What how does that like? you know, like behavior wise or feeling wise kind of look like because um Abby says she's feeling guilty for n- supposedly not working <laughs> yeah. enough. We know how hard she works. <laughs> um but you know I mean it yeah it, you for me work life balance is like having that equilibrium where you can actually equally prioritize your personal work and the demands of in mean, your personal life and the demands of your work. So um, it's, it's like a balance between doing your best and exerting your best effort, your, all your energy, so you can meet your deliverables. <laughs> and uh, doing what you love to do, so you can refuel, regain the energy, so you can just give out your best in all aspects of your life. And of course, that, that, I think that that also um, covers you spending time with the significant people, having that uh, separate time to, you know, just really um, give importance to what really matters. Yeah, I'm thinking about it and how, uh, what it does mean to me, um, work-life balance. It's kind of a process or it's an ongoing practice. There's no perfect way to do it everyone's way of doing it is different and it's to each their own. Um, But I think at the heart of it is having that awareness 
of yourself um, and being aware of what needs to be done right now, what can wait, uh, what you can do later on, and then just making sure that's in most of the aspects or of your life that do matter. So you prioritize what is really important to you. Um, so it's, it's having to balance the work, but then at the same time, how can I also replenish the energy, my personal energy, my, my fuel, if we were a car, uh, how can I keep myself going and making sure I'm healthy while I'm doing it? Because our body is our main instrument it's our main um, vehicle to get us to where we want to go, to get us to do what we need to do. So we really do need to take care of ourselves and the different areas in our life that do add value, that do make us feel, um, that do make us feel happy and that energizes us. So um, I think that's the gist of it. It doesn't really completely describe it um but i hope that helps you guys and our listeners also understand a little bit i guess kind of like um uh like grace and like um what marga has said um i do have also thought about what it means and how it how i can apply it to my life you know it, i guess a thing that uh, that occurred to me you know, when I was in the midst of it was, um, is it even possible to achieve balance? Like, what is that, you know, is it, are, are we just supposed to focus on one thing and then put all our energy into that? Um, so for me right now, to me, it means two things. Um, I'll share the first one. Mm, means You guys know the scientific formula of work, right? That work equals... Um, basically displacement force and then you're displaced right like it's a, any amount of energy that's put on something i don't want to make it so technical but you know for people who like um are science majors out there you, you definitely uh, know what that what that's about like work is any amount of energy put onto something so that it moves and is created into something so um i like to keep this kind of in mind um just because I think that, um, to me now, work doesn't necessarily have to mean work via something that a boss asks me to do. I can, I can also work at my relationships. I can also work on myself. I can also work on a project that I've always wanted to do. So kind of in that form to me it makes sense because then it kind of amalgamates everything and it kind of like fuses everything together and makes okay so it's this energy this this kind of pressure but it's like not an, an annoying kind of pressure it's like this drive that I want to do my best and be my best at everything I do across the board and um so that's my first that's my first definition of what work means to me. The second definition is, um, it means a good schedule. And does it have to look perfect every week? Like I have to do the exact same thing every day? No, right? Like um, sometimes I can have bits and pieces, longer rest periods one week and then shorter rest periods another week. Um, so uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's kind of, um, yeah, we can, I guess, flesh out more of what how it works in our lives uh, a little later uh, <laughs> I'm not sure actually I guess my definition of it would, would still also be very similar to what all of you have shared but for me I guess it's important to first for anyone to define what what work is for you and what life is for you so that you know what you're actually balancing but I, I just got curious because everyone, all of us mentioned, you know, yeah, being able to identify, you know, what's really important and prioritize what truly matters. I, I got curious, how do you guys think a highly career-oriented person would define work-life balance for someone who values his work very, very highly? 
would the concept of balancing work and life even matter? Or would one even be able to separate the two? Yeah, no, that's such a good question, Abby. Um, well, we're not, we don't want to necessarily put a specific person right on the pedestal, but for someone who is very, very career oriented, and let's say um, for the sake of their career, they have forsaken their, you know, looking or searching for a family or um, looking and taking care of, of you know, basically they sacrifice other things for um, the sake of um, reaching whatever the top looks like for them. For them, it would mean like um, working out early in the morning so that they can get more work in throughout the day. It could also look like they have, I don't know if you guys have seen like, you know, those walking treadmills and then they have like <laughs> their computer on top and they're yeah. mm, it could look like that. It could look like l corporate lunch meetings. Um, it could look like um, dinner events in the evening. This is all pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. Please, no one do this while <laughs> no one have a gathering. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that at all, but um, maybe that's what it looks like um, for them. And maybe that's where they get the greatest satisfaction, you know, when they're able to sleep at night and say, hey, I've checked all of this off on my, my to-do list. Yeah, what, are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's a, Abby's question is really thought provoking. I think it's a good, it's a great question because on the other end of the spectrum, we also have, there are also others who their work is what gives them life. It is what fulfills them. It's what drives them every day. And that's one of the things they're passionate about. So we completely understand that. Our viewers out there who resonate with this, um, yes, it, there are people who, who find fulfillment in the work that they do. And yes, um, when you're passionate about something, it does, like, um, the amount of energy you expend for it, sometimes you're not aware of just how much uh, energy it takes from you because you're just so passionate about it. Um, you see uh, corporate folks who are very devoted to the work that they're doing. Taking, they're able to take calls at all hours of the day. Um, they have the same amount of energy that they bring to the table. They can can come up with projects that they can be so driven um but i guess what's also important here is um when it to have that awareness again of where, where it gets to the point where that's that's the only thing right now that is taking up the most time um and if and also being aware of how if it's draining you just um being aware of what it's doing to you maybe physically because sometimes um, you know, when you're working in corporate, you have all these medical <laughs> benefits. So take advantage of that, I guess. And maybe that's why we have the packages. Um, but then again, um, it's, that's the whole point of this is having, striking that balance. So if we were, like, uh, sorry, it's early in the morning and we're all hungry, I guess everyone wants to eat breakfast, but let's imagine a pizza. And if most of that pizza is, purely work there is no other slice or nothing else on your plate is being occupied by anything else but that pizza of work then that means that there is no balance so when you try when you're aware of that um, maybe that awareness could encourage you to make to just insert a little bit of something else because we're all human uh, we're not robots uh, we don't we're not uh, we're not powered by Bluetooth or I don't know what electricity. Uh, we're all human, and so we also need the, our basic needs. Kahit basic needs man lang. So I know we we recognize that for some work is really something they're very 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 passionate about. But then, as long as we meet our basic needs, I think that's just the balance that. Uh, you know, we would want everyone or we encourage everyone to try to have a little bit more of. How about you, Grace? You're I in corporate, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I bet you. Certainly agree. Certainly agree. Yeah. 
And uh, but for I I, I completely uh, agree with what Julia and Marga said. Um, basically, when it comes to work-life balance, it always boils down to what satisfies you, right? To what gives you the sense of purpose. So if you feel that your sense of purpose is so, is a predominantly uh, something that you get from work, uh, we cannot really question those who are very passionate or who are really overachievers, as they say, you know. Um, uh, as you climb up the ladder of work and as you as you know as as the as you climb up the ladder of work as like at work basically the responsibilities grow and uh, it's like um and of course as I've met, as uh, Marga mentioned we're not a robot life is not all about work so at the end of the day it's just really what you value what what you it's about what you value versus that of what you what you're passionate about but of course r- finding the right balance between uh work and health as well your well-being where does that come from because um study would would repeatedly say that it can have a destructive um effect in the long run if you will just uh be focusing on work alone uh, it's funny because I'm actually reading a book called uh, you know the, the 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 monk who sold his Ferrari. It's actually the same thing. Uh, we're in uh, we're in the, the the Robin S Sharma actually emphasized that um, it's about a lawyer that uh, who given who've given up or given up everything he has he has uh, just so he can find that sense of purpose and he so the, the, the title itself speaks to, speak to the whole whole, whole uh, fable that he turned his back to the corporate world and focus on his sense of meaning so um yeah it, it, it can be that that your sense of purpose at first could be at work but you really have to dig deep and have that sense of awareness what really matters in life because uh, uh at the end of the day it's not really just about work <laughs> So that's that my take on that. Very, very profound, Grace. What's <laughs> the title of the book again? The the monk who sold his Ferrari by Robin S. Sharma. <laughs> I need to find a copy of that. But <laughs> yeah. I I kind of actually resonate with what you mentioned about climbing up corporate ladder. Um. I remember years ago when I was working um, in the corporate setup, I I worked really really hard to feel like you know I'm I'm gonna get somewhere. I'm not going to be stuck here doing this all the time. But eventually, when I was up for promotion, I felt this very strong um, sense of dread I guess um, because I just realized that I was working overtime a lot um, so that I could get promoted and, and then I asked myself what does a promotion also even mean and then I realized that it would mean I would have bigger responsibilities that would cause me to just stay longer um, at work every day and I kind of dreaded that future um, I remember what Grace mentioned about digging deep and I really that really um, it hit me because I had to do that very re- uh, not very recently um, a few months ago um, so since we're talking about work and life um, I, I came to a crossroads. Well, um, I've been having crossroads at different points in time. I know, I'm sure everybody's had a point where they've had to make certain decisions that would make changes or shift them in a different direction. And so for me, um, I was working in corporate and because of all of the pandemic challenges, all of these new things that um, companies have to do in order to adapt to the new, to the new normal. 
um, at the workplace and um, it entailed a lot of just really fast forwarding innovations and projects and at the same time I was also coming to the point where my master's or my time of residency in my master's program was coming to an end and I had to make a decision uh, whether to try should I continue just trying to juggle everything because like what you guys are going through there's a lot of different things going on in our life we're not just doing one thing right so we're constantly juggling and so at this point it was am I ready to add more to what I'm currently juggling and already feeling and knowing that currently it's it's not okay um, I'm not I'm not able to perform the way that I want to perform in any in either aspect, whether in work, whether in school, both things were suffering. So I had to come to a decision and it was a really tough decision. It took me how many months to even sit down, think it through, and then again, invite the important people in my life to be there um, and just listen to what I had to say because the decision not only impacts me, it would impact my family in a way, it would impact my partner because I'm uh, my fiance because every decision you make could also impact others, right? And so I had to make a very difficult decision on whether to continue or what do I need to prioritize? What is most important to me? And making that choice even if it was for myself, was actually a very difficult decision. And it entailed a lot of tears because this choosing yourself is sometimes the hardest thing to do. Um, when you're so used to, to um, thinking about others, and you know, obviously we're social beings, so our families are very important to us. We're Filipino, Filipinos at the heart, we families are very um, important and that's what's at the core of everything for us um, so we're so used to doing things and um, living a certain life but there comes a point where you really do need to choose yourself so um, there I had to make the decision to prioritize my masters and it was tough um, and it was a lot of adjustment because even after you're riddled with guilt on whether you made the right choice, even if it's a choice for you, um, but how many months down the road, it really took me a long time to, to come to this point. Um, I'm going to defend my thesis next week. So it took a lot to get me here. I had to quit my job. Congratulations. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. It really took a lot. Um, and yeah, so do I regret it now? Now that I'm here? No, because looking back, I really, really needed time for myself to be able to accomplish what I needed to do. So yeah, sorry, it was a bit long. <laughs> but thank you guys no, for listening. Beautiful. It's actually a very brave choice, Marga. I commend you on that. Because, uh, yeah, in my case, I, I, I wasn't able to really quit my job, even though there was really a point that I wanted to. Uh, I just like you've mentioned, um, families, what really matters to us. And since, you know, I'm, I'm the breadwinner, I can't really do that. But however, uh, what really helped me in the process would be, you know, setting a clear boundary between the most significant aspects of my life whether that be work, grad school, uh, social life, and uh, yeah, 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 work. Because um, during the lockdown, let me just share, this might be quite long as well. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, it, it seems like, especially during the lockdown, at the beginning, the, the first trimester of the lockdown last year, it, was, it seems like work-life balance would be an impossible feat for me because of course uh you're you're just no one sees, sees you doing something when you're 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 at home right so um we're, uh, by the way i'm coming from a standpoint of uh you know I, I, i'm part of a bto company where that where we do have a quota every month i'm a recruitment manager and i have seven people that i'm handling under me so 
uh, it was really difficult because it was just not like it, it was not just, it was not just my my deliverables that I have to look into, but also my entire team. So technology even made it really worse because you know you're accessible around the clock. So yes. Uh, <laughs> Kind of, and there are our clients are from US, UK, different parts of the world. Uh, you know, so there would be times that even though I'm already, uh, I already ended my shift, there would be clients who would message, who would have uh, escalations that I have to answer. Like, you know, it's like that. That that's the time that I really, I I almost given up. As I mentioned earlier, I talked to my mentor already. If if can I have like take a pause on my grad school, only to find out that we're two weeks away from it, from the quarter, so we're ending the quarter. <laughs> so I just continue with it, but it was really difficult. But uh, I, the the things that she mentioned to me really resonates until now. Mm-hmm. You know, you really have to set a boundary, like um. You know, a clear boundary. Like you have, when it's the end of your shift, you have to let the other people, the other. You, I, I, I was, I, I, it was difficult at first that I have to talk to my to our CEO because I'm reporting to him that um. I, I, I told him that I'm really struggling with this, and this is my need at this moment. You know, it, it seems like I, I, I mean, I need that there, is, there should be a clear boundary with me my work and my personal life or else it it will take the life out of me. <laughs> you know it's it, it it might i might lose my 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 motivation at work if this will continue on so uh it, it really helped in such a way that we were made, able to re-strategize because of that concern sometimes it really takes a brief i think a brief soul to just, you know, tell the other person what you really need. Because, oh, yeah. yeah, what you really need. Because, um, especially during this time, we're all struggling. And, uh, in all fairness, the way I've seen it, um, compassion is very evident to each one. So, during that time, we were able to re-strategize, we were able to, um, you know, um, have a specific person who would work on different clients at a specific time. So I think um what that what really helped me uh in the process and uh, thank God I, I finished the second year of online oh, <laughs> online class <laughs> this June uh, <laughs> with uh you know with, with without compromising and even going beyond our quota every every month. So, oh God. <laughs> Yeah, so it 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 re- it was although it's still an ongoing process. I I would really admire it. I admire that um you know this is uh there's no perfect formula for for work life balance. Uh, for me, it's just a conscious intentional choice that you have to make. You have to fight for it, or else it will take the life out of you. <laughs> <laughs> As Marga said, we are survivors from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it for me. How about you, Julia? Wait, love. Wait. Uh, my my anak is there. Anak, wait. Yes. Yeah, so, si Julia yata ang totoong champion ng work life balance right oh, now. Hey. <laughs> Grabe, yeah. pati yung magiging pati pagiging mother na. No? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> because I also feel the same way as Abby, you know, like when, when I don't know if if it's like you know you really really feel like you you feel guilty because you're not working enough because like I do I don't have a job job right and I'm, I'm just I'm just doing my masters and sometimes that gets to you know, like yeah. should I not be doing more like same. <laughs> I, I have a time, right? Like, I have time to rest. I have time to watch Netflix until, like, midnight. Um, should I not be hustling? Um, yeah. You know, social media makes it worse because you yes. see what other people are doing and then you question, yeah. should I do, be doing more? Mm-hmm. Shouldn't I be doing more? Also, relating it a bit with my earlier question about, you know, um, career-oriented people and, you know, just really individuals who find 
purpose, satisfaction, meaning from their work. Um, I guess I was one of those at some point, like back then. Um, because I, I, I got lucky that I landed a role that really felt to me like it's what I should be doing for life. I, I found purpose in, so much purpose and value in doing that job. And it meant so much to me that I didn't find you know, losing time for other things. Um, and it wasn't easy you know, identifying that I'm not, and that, that I do not have the right sort of balance anymore um i guess because i i just sort of noticed that it's not right when i realized how people would always give compliments instead and always be asking how do you do it you do so well you perform so well you know, you're like a machine uh, any, anytime you need something you can easily deliver and you deliver it with good quality so but just to think and put yourself in a situation that you find so much meaning in your job and then people also compliment you for everything that you're doing. You just, you, you just feel like you're in such a good place in life. So I, I didn't mind mm -hmm. not having you know enough time for friends. I didn't mind not having enough time for family, for example. So, and I just, you know, parang realizing that I don't have work-life balance didn't come easy until I got to a point wherein um, my, it's my body who was actually, oh, hi, baby. <laughs> hi, Ruthie. Mm -hmm. No, and it was it was my body and I guess also my mental health that sort of gave the signs that that you know, something's not right. And then you know I was eventually getting closer and closer to feeling burned out. And then other signs also that I saw where um, friend would reach out and I wouldn't like it. Parang it came to me as you're, mm. I, I'm giving you time and that time is taking away from something mm. that's giving me a lot of value in my life. Mm -hmm. it, the realization that that was wrong didn't come mm. easy. Mm -hmm. So, yun, siguro right now, you know, parang coming from that place, na, you just felt so, ano na, you know, tired every day, tapos, you, it's not that I lost friends naman along that, that time, no? pero um, I w I'm also lucky that I have a really good solid support system that everyone else is also pretty much career oriented that people mm -hmm. usually don't, my friends actually don't mind if we don't mm -hmm. really get to talk to each other for a very long time, pero we just also come to realizing one day that Work is something you can never really yeah. own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can never truly call it, you know, you can never say this is mine. It's always something that you share with other people and that other people can come and go one day. Uh, yeah. no. <laughs> yes, baby, share oh, with us what uh, you have to say. <laughs> Ruthie! <laughs> <laughs> Now she's got work life to balance. Share also, yes. The baby no, please go, a, be, go ahead, Abby. This well. is. I've been talking too much. No, <laughs> you haven't, Abby. <laughs> Abby, <no. laughs> Abby, yes. And Marga and Grace. <laughs> and Anna. Okay, so uh, wait, uh, is Ab Abby, are you done? Probably it didn't sound like you concluded the whole story. Oh. 
The whole. So I, I usually get distracted when I see babies. <laughs> <laughs> and I also got lost in the train of thought. So anyway, just, just to close that, siguro, um, I would like to hear from everyone what science also told you that, you know, you're, that there's a problem going on. For me, that was that. It, it was really the, the feeling of you... Uh, I mean, there was really a feeling that I am slowly losing my motivation and my passion with my work. So, because I, I love my work, I love my team. Uh, I've st- this is actually the longest employ- employer that I have. I've been part of the company for six years already. Oh, and <laughs> uh, so it's something that I, I do not want to, you know, let go easily. But at some point, since there was really a feeling of me not um, not doing my best already because uh, almost, I mean, 80% of the time, I just feel tired. I just do not have the drive to do things, whether that be at work or with my, with my personal life. At some point, um, my, my sister is also a doctor, started to notice that why are you easily uh, get so annoyed and grumpy? <laughs> You're not like that. So uh, there was there was a, I mean evident uh, physical mani- manifestations as well. I I started to have my back aches uh, during the time. Which is, for me that was really the 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 clear manifestation that I'm already stressed. So. I know it was like my body telling me that I have to do something. And uh, yeah, at, as I mentioned earlier, what really helped was you, you having a clear boundary, you know, setting a boundary and being intentional with uh, your self-care as well. Because um, I think the, as mental uh, health advocates, we all know that we cannot pour from an empty cup. So mm-hmm. that's, that's what I mm-hmm. did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. Like I, you know, when when you guys were talking about it, I, I realized the common denominator that all of us have when this whole work life balance and like everyone, not just us, but um, is that we're, you know, we're constantly trying to balance our limited amount of time. Like I, I am such a believer that time is the only resource that we will never get back, and and. And I, I guess it's a it's fact in, in a way because you can't, right? It, after this minute, it's done, it's done. And so it's really a matter of, you know, how do we want to spend our limited amount of time um, in, if I may, on this earth, you know, with the people that we have been given, with the talents that we've been given, um, and and how does how will it look like at at the end of all of it? You know, um, I don't want to go so existential here, but I mean, like the matter of the fact is, we're not going to live forever. And then the question becomes, what will we live for? Who will we live for? And um, so yeah, and and to concretize that in my own life, those were were many things that. Uh, I also had to deal with and I also dealt with then I had my daughter you know and she was such a game changer because like breakthrough in that mentality that had set in so mine and I, that I had to be this I had to be this like no wait I don't have to be anything like this little creature who you just saw five minutes ago sees me and loves me for who I am and as I am, as I am right now, and wow, I did not expect to cry on this podcast. It's all right, um, it's all right Julia. And and hey, <laughs> oh my gosh, thanks for the support. Um, um, and and she does not say, "Mommy, you need to make this much money now." Mommy, you don't. You have to look and be this kind of body figure shape now you know and you don't have to do it at this time at this time she just says mommy I need you and that fills me and it makes me 
complete makes me whole again. And um, so I guess it, it's, it's not so much like when I live for her, I also live for myself. You know, that, that, that relationship now becomes uh, um, my, my greatest motivation. And I'm sure for a lot of parents out there, they will, they will also resonate. And, and when you guys also become parents too, I, I don't know when, I, I'm not forcing that on you, but when you do, um, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's such like, wow. Um, yeah. Oh, I should um, give Julia a hug. Yes, Julia, sending you hugs. Virtual <sighs> hug. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure a lot of moms Thanks, guys. Can completely yeah. would really, really resonate with with you, Julia. It's the being a mom, I think, is the toughest, the toughest job there is. There's yeah, no it's profession. A job. <laughs> right? Yeah. There is nothing like it. Yeah, but it's one of the most fulfilling. Um, I think aside from you know, um, choosing and intentionally intention being intentional and having a conscious choice nga of um having that work life balance, setting a boundary. Uh, you really have to be compassionate to to yourself. You know, um. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I remember that uh, what yeah. made it really difficult for me during the start of the pandemic, as I've mentioned, was that I also felt that I'm not doing enough. Like, parang meron pa akong maibibigay. Kaya lang, uh, yun nga, parang um, during the time, it was really difficult because you're going through the same thing. We're all on the same, you know, uh, on the same boat during the time even until now you know it's it's just that we were slowly adopting that makes it quite easier now compared to how it was last year but the uh, the, the thing is um with the uh, with what i with with the with the strategies that i that i did um yeah, I also did journaling, by the way. So journal journaling is very important because it's like you, it's like very, it's it's like you're, it's where you channel all the the negative emotions and at the same time making sense of it. So now that I'm at this at this uh, point in my life, that now that I'm feeling it, what what can I do next? So it's like the thing that I do, and I also had a attitude list. So the things that I'm thankful for. Even though it was really difficult when you're when you when you when you know you have so many things like on your plate, uh, at one point you can still see that there is something positive coming out of it. I, I guess for me, what help what helps me is in in balancing work and life is um, accepting that I can't do everything at the same all at the same time. Because when you when you're when you're someone who's driven, you you have this mindset that you can have your cake and you can eat it too, but then sometimes life just happens, which and sometimes it can smack you in the face and and remind you that <laughs> yes you can eat your cake but not now. So also it I think it echoes with what Julia said earlier. You questions that she asked herself you know, what what do you do with your time now what is important to do now you know, what's what's something that you should be putting off now so parang yun, accepting that you can't do everything all at once all together at the same time it helps in keeping things in balance and prioritizing what truly matters and uh, as a single mom with a baby who's studying as Grace said, boundaries, boundaries are so important to me as well, because um, I need, I really need to set that car of those few hours in a day to just study. And that, 
that sometimes is heartbreaking for me to have to say to my daughter who wants to just come into the study room and you know was crying and mommy mommy and I have to say no like um, I can't this is this is the only time I have for study the rest of the day is for you you know and and I think it also just the realization it also sets a good example for for your kids to realize hey that work is important study is important and um yeah hopefully hopefully she'll she'll get into good habits as well and working if I can just wrap up my own little part of the world of work-life balance and what I'd like to impart um, on other people as as a pabao and um if anyone so chooses to eat it um that you know work-life balance is hard it's hard and it's a lifelong process but does it need to be perfect no is it impossible no so yeah in my last few cents and my pabaon i guess would be well for whoever decided wh whoever in our listeners decided today made a conscious choice to listen in on this podcast you're already making a step for yourself in a way um, in your own uh, work life balance just by listening and just by hearing our story so thank you for um, carving out time and um, listening this morning and also allowing yourself to have this moment for yourself this Sunday morning. I think that's essentially what we're all trying to say. Um, it's the little things. It's the small things we do. Like what Julia mentioned. It doesn't have to be a big gesture. It doesn't have to be a totally life-altering transformation in a day. It could be the little choices, the little decisions you make um, that make a difference. For me, don't strive for perfection because, uh, you know, there is no perfect, as we've mentioned, eh, there is no perfect, uh, but strive for realistic, re realistic one. Um, some days there would be, you might focus on work. Uh, other days there will be more time on energy to pursue what you really like, like your hobbies, uh, time with your loved ones. Um, balance is something that you don't really achieve over time. It's not each day, so it's and it, it's okay. Uh, you just you just have to you know um, be more compassionate about uh, practice uh, compassion towards yourself. That that's okay. It's not always uh, a good day. I remember that. Um, I think. Uh, there was a founder of career mentoring group who said this it is important uh, to remain fluid and constantly assess where you are uh, parang versus with that of your goals and your priorities yeah. so you can you know so you can really achieve what you really want in life um, your, your goals and your priorities are not always the same because your priorities has deeper value most, most of the time. So, yeah. So, I think, uh, yeah, just really accept that there is no perfect work-life balance. And, again, it's a constant conscious choice that you have to make. Uh, Self-care is really something that I somewhat want to emphasize. Because uh, without self-care, you cannot really um, give, give the, the best of you. To whatever you're doing so mm -hmm. that's it <laughs> i guess my little pabana lang to everyone is um, like what all these ladies said um work-life balance doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be rushed um i'll add the lang siguro that it also doesn't have to cost you anything so there are mm -hmm. lots of free resources on the internet this mm -hmm. podcast for example is free mm -hmm. diba? so there are many more so even counseling, actually, there are also free options out there. In touch can offer pro bono if you feel like you really need not to talk to someone, a, a professional about it, just to help you, you know, yeah. untangle everything that's in your head right now because really it's hard to just do it all alone. So if you think you do need one, go ahead. Um, you know, it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. It 
there are ways that you can help yourself and sometimes you don't even have to spend any at all. So this has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation with you ladies. I am so happy to have been in this group with you. Um, to everyone, we hope that you also enjoyed today's episode. And um, please stay tuned to the next one that we're having. Um, it's about self-care. Um, hey, perfect. It's, perfect. Yes, it's a good, this episode is a good segue to that. So if you need help balancing work and life, then go ahead and check out next week's episode. It's about caring for ourselves. So thank you, everyone. And we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Happy Bye. Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Bye.